that difficult. The president asked Comey what can be done to lift the cloud. Comey explained that we were running it down as quickly as possible and that there would be great benefit if we didn't find anything to our good housekeeping seal of approval. But we had to do our work. Comey also told the president that congressional leaders were aware that the FBI was not investigating the president personally. The president said several times, we need to get that fact out. The president commented that if there was some satellite, which Comey took to mean an associate of the president's or the campaign, that did something, it would be good to find that out, but that he himself had not done anything wrong and he hoped Comey would find a way to get that out, that we weren't investigating him. After the call ended, Comey called Buente and told him about the conversation, asked for guidance on how to respond, and said he was uncomfortable with direct contact from the president about the investigation. On the morning of April 11th, 2017, the president called Comey again According to Comey's contemporaneous record of the conversation, the president said he was following up to see if Comey did what the president had asked last time, getting out that he personally is not under investigation. Comey responded that he had passed the report to Buente, but not heard back, and he informed the president that the traditional channel for such a request would be to have the White House Council contact DOJ leadership. The president said he would take that step. The president added, because I have been very loyal to you, very loyal. We had that thing, you know. In a televised interview that was taped early that afternoon, the president was asked if it was too late for him to ask Comey to step down. The president responded, no, it's not too late, but you know, I have confidence in him. We'll see what happens. You know, it's going to be interesting. After the interview, Hicks told the president she thought the president's comment about Comey should be removed from the broadcast of the interview, but the president wanted to keep it in, which Hicks thought was unusual. Later that day, the president told senior advisors, including McGon and, and Prebus, that he had reached out to Comey twice in recent weeks. The president acknowledged that McGon would not approve of the outreach to Comey because he had previously cautioned the president that he should not talk to Comey directly to prevent any perception that the White House was interfering with investigations. The president told McGon that Comey had indicated the FBI could make a public statement that the president was not under investigation if the Department of Justice approved that action. After speaking with the president, McCon fo followed up with Buente to relay the president's understanding that the FBI could make a public announcement if the Department of Justice cleared it. McGon recalled that Buente said Comey had told him there was nothing obstructive about the calls from the president, but they made Comey uncomfortable. According to McGon, Buente responded that he did not want to issue a statement about the president not being under investigation because of the potential political ramifications and did not want to order Comey to do it because that action could prompt appointment of a special counsel. Buente did not recall that aspect of his conversation with McGon, but did recall telling McGon that the direct outreaches from the president to Comey were a problem. Buente recalled that McGon agreed and said he would do what he could to address the issue. In analyzing the president's reaction to Sessions' recusal and the requests he made to Coates, Pompeo, Rogers, and Comey, the following evidence is relevant to the elements of the obstruction of justice. A. Obstructive Act. The evidence shows that after Comey's March 20, 2017 testimony, the president repeatedly reached out to intelligence agency leaders to discuss the FBI's investigation. But witnesses had different recollections of the precise content of those outreaches. 
Some ODNI officials recalled that Coates told them immediately after the March 22nd Oval Office meeting that the president asked Coates to intervene with Comey and stop the investigation. But first-hand witnesses to the encounter remember the conversation differently. Pompeo said Pompeo had no memory of the specific meeting, but generally recalled the president urging officials to get the word out that the president had done nothing wrong related to Russia. Coates recalled that the president asked that Coates state publicly that no link existed between the president and Russia, but did not ask him to speak with Comey or to help end the investigation. The other outreaches by the president during this period were similar in nature. The president asked Rogers if he could do anything to refute the stories linking the president to Russia, and the president asked Comey to make a public statement that would lift the cloud of the ongoing investigation by making clear that the president was not personally under investigation. These requests, while significant enough that Rogers thought it was important to document the encounter in a written memorandum, were not interpreted by the officials who received them as directives to improperly interfere with the investigation. B. Nexus to a proceeding. At the time of the president's outreaches to leaders of the intelligence agencies in late March and early April 2017, the FBI's Russia investigation did not yet involve grand jury proceedings. The outreaches, however, came after and were in response to Comey's March 2017 announcement that the FBI, as part of its counterintelligence mission, was conducting an investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. Comey testified that the investigation included any links or coordination with Trump campaign officials and would include an assessment of whether any crimes were committed. C. Intent. As described above, the evidence does not establish that the president asked or directed intelligence agency leaders to stop or interfere with the FBI's Russia investigation. And the president affirmatively told Comey that if some satellite was involved in Russian ele election interference, it would be good to find that out. But the president's intent in trying to prevent Sessions' recusal and in reaching out to Coates, Pompeo, Rogers, and Comey following 